So good morning or afternoon. Um, thank you for, for coming to this first webinar on the rollout of the protection analysis update. Uh, for the one who don't know me, I'm Francesco Michele. I'm the strategic analysis and advocacy officer within the Global Protection Cluster. And I'm um, very much happy to have you today. This is the first webinar of a three plan webinar that we wanted to organize as a Global Protection Cluster for the rollout of the protection analysis update new guidance. Uh, I will do, given the participation, I will do the presentation in English, but uh, if there is anyone, any French speaker or Spanish speaker, please uh, ask questions in, uh, in both languages and I will try to address them as much as I can. Um, so, as you can see more or less from the agenda, the, the idea of today is to have sort of two parts. A first part where we're going to look at the basics uh, introduced for 2023 and a bit the process. Uh, and then a second part where I will uh, go through with you on the new format of the protection analysis update chapter by chapter to actually show a bit the rationale uh, behind the chapters and then having a bit of reflection. At any point in time, uh, please stop me or ask questions, raise your hands, uh, um, or otherwise we're going to have uh, time for a couple of Q&A uh, after each of the parts. Um, having said that, uh, um, I think I can start directly, so I don't take too much time of yours, but before I start, there is any question or answer or initial doubts? Otherwise, again, I will ask a couple of thumbs up if it's okay if I start. Great. So please, uh, I have the tendency sometimes to speak too quick, uh, so please stop me if there anything is unclear. OK, so don't worry about that. Um, the basics. So uh, in the review process that we've been doing the last three months, uh, some of you has been involved. Uh, we've been looking at uh, good practices, best practices of the last one year and a half from all operations, and uh, that helped us out in uh, clarifying or concretizing a bit the core objective of the protection analysis update. That's the first elements that we try to look into. And uh, as you can see in the slides, the, the objectives of the protection analysis update are around three general areas. The first is to present and illustrate much better protection risks, so call the attention on core protection risk in your operation, but also attached to those uh, to the identification of those risks, concrete recommendations. So to <clears throat> propose an integrated approach to address risks that can be uh, informing the sector, but also beyond the sector. The second core objective uh, will be more an advocacy oriented one. So the protection analysis update can be those documents where you actually bring in uh, a good balance of both data but also qualitative information from partner, from SAG, from AUR, from local uh, colleagues uh, that sometimes we don't have space in other documents of analysis. So the protection analysis updates really should be the space that help you out in, uh, in actually showcasing the knowledge we have from text. And of course, um, even the way we structure the new guidance is to actually support better use for advocacy. So the goal is that is the goal that we had for 2023. That it's a simpler process, a bit more structured, all focus on doing better, on using it better in operation for, for your needs. And third, uh, they are all connected, but uh, the protection analysis update can be helpful, helpful and a document in order to guide and inform uh, planning, response and priority at the level of the cluster. Uh, delving in directly on the new changes, so um, um, compared to before we had a loose format, um, just one, and we decided to introduce two formats. Uh, one that we call the standard protection analysis update, which should be used more for the country-wide analysis, so it should become the reference document of your identification of protection risks at country level. And then uh, what we call the brief protection analysis update. This came as a request from many operations because oftentimes you have the need to provide quick updates, a quick analysis, not to have a cumbersome process of analysis, but be able to actually show something in a very quick, um, in a very, very quickly. And so the brief update is meant to use, be used flexibly if for quick updates on an, an onset crisis, a sudden situation and so on, but also for thematic focuses 
you know, sometimes you might have need to actually dig into one risk or one topic or one thematic, uh, or even subnational uh, protection analysis update. In terms of the frequency, um, we decided not to have uh, any more a scheduled quarterly protection analysis update uh, process, but uh, to be more strategic. So the, at the level of the protection cluster, coordinator and coordinator in collaboration with partners, uh, SAG and uh, AOS, and uh, look strategically when would be better to have a protection analysis update. And the only uh, elements that you, as you will see in the process we suggest is that you maintain a very close uh, communication with the regional focal point at the level of the global protection cluster. The goal being, if we manage to map out and have a more or less an anticipation, also the level of the global protection cluster, we can have a better support, both on advocacy, both on reaching out to targets, to donors and to other actors. And um, so it's more a dialogue between you and the regional focal point, which is strategic. And of course, the regional focal point is the person that will liaise within the global protection cluster to actually uh, use all the support that we can provide for, for your needs. Um, the minimum we introduce, instead of a frequency, we introduce a minimum of two standard protection analysis update years and one brief uh, to set a bit of a minimum and a bit of consistency across operations. Of course, ideally, it would be good to have sort of a protection analysis update sort of at the beginning of the year and one at the end. But again, uh, uh, you might have different timeline, different needs, specific situation uh, related to your country, some renewal or some mandate at the level of the Security Council. I don't know. It really looks strategically when will be better to have the protection analysis update. What is new? Uh, you will see many small elements, but uh, to go to the core changes, um, first of all, we introduce a page limitation. So we have seen um, from the 50-55 protection analysis update different setups. Some of them very long, some of them short and so on. But we just we thought that we I mean also from the consultation that limiting the pages help in being more focused, but also to have it a much more uh, uh, less burden in document to produce that you can use more for operation. So focus more on the use rather than in the production of it. The second core change relates to the risks and the presentation of protection risks. So there is a core limitation of five protection risks maximum for protection analysis update, which means doesn't mean that in your analysis process you don't you should not you should just identify five. In your collective process with partner AUR, SAG, and so on and so forth, uh, it's good to have an analysis of all core protection risks. But the goal, and you will see across the presentation, is that the protection analysis update is really focused on updating. So updating what is priority, what is relevant to show for the period covered by the protection analysis update. So you might have protection risks that are, we know that are in the country, but in the last four or five months, what is what on what we want to call the attention. In order to guide you through and to streamline a bit that process specifically with the colleagues of the you are the partner and so on. Uh, for the last three months, we've been working closely with the global AURs and we develop 15 uh, uh, core standard protection risk definitions. So now they are agreed uh, between us and, uh, and, the, and the global AURs. And the goal is we should use in the PAUs those definitions to present a unique narrative. So not any more different areas of analysis, but our analysis is to identify core protection risks. And of course, in your process, you try to uh, have all the uh, a joint process where all the combination of the impacts or the drivers at the, level, at the level of each area contribute to the risk or are affected by the risk. In that, we try to simplify the format. So we introduce some standard sections like the executive summary, the response and the recommendation that we will see afterwards. And we introduce some criteria to look at the quality, but uh, also to devise a bit to how to publish a PAU, so a bit of consistency. Um, the, as we will see afterward, uh, we are working very closely with the geographical focal points, so they can really guide you. We all can guide you, but the geographical focal points specific can really guide you in shaping the protection analysis update. The core aspect is that there is not going to be any vetting, meaning that it's not that if a document arrives to the global protection cluster, we decide to either use it or not. Any document of analysis producing cluster will be used and will be disseminated. What we try to clarify is 
we wanted to maintain some consistency on what is a protection analysis update compared to many other analyses that you actually do very well. So also to take out that element that the protection analysis update should be just the overall encompassing product. OK, so we will see afterwards some of those criteria, but the goal is that <clears throat> at the level between us and the region of point and you, we decide that each time uh, uh, what is important to maintain as a protection analysis update or uh, be used as something else. So here are the guidance. Uh, uh, the guidance, uh, so you have uh, two, the two new formats, so both the standard and the brief. What we try to do is not just to give you a structure, but to actually develop a full entire analysis. So you will see that the two formats are actually sample, so you can have a reference on more or less how it should look like, not just the chapters, but all the full analysis. And also they are in word, so you can modify, adapt them according to your needs and, and the processes. On, uh, related to the definition of protection risks, uh, you will find uh, what is called the protection risk explanatory notes, which contains both the definitions, and in the definition, you will see that we try to be very operational, so not be legalistic, not be technical, so they can be used with partner and colleagues. Um, and when they, they, they are divided in three parts. Uh, what action or acts or events constitute the presence of the risk and what will be useful for us as a protection cluster and protection cluster partner to monitor? And also, in a, and with some uh, uh, hint on information and data that can be helpful. Um, while the definition provides the standard and the core, then what we try to do is to develop a hands-on uh, two-pager, very simple, that uh, basically take the same chapter that you have in the sample format of the protection risk analysis, and it actually links the different section of the narrative with the protection analytical framework categories. Because we have found that oftentimes the, our colleagues from the IM side, they understand very well a framework, but sometimes the framework is difficult to be communicated to other partners or, or colleagues that are not IM specific. So the idea is to, that the document can help you out in, uh, in explaining maybe partner colleagues and maybe other sectors, and what do we mean with the threats, with the effects of the threats and so on in an analysis document. And, and of course, as last, uh, um, we develop a, what we call an annotated template. So it's a, it's a document that basically takes the sample and it provides a bit of guidance on how to use, adapt the map, uh, the, sorry, the format. Uh, uh, some guidance on the content based on the protection analytical framework, and also it provides suggestions and sources of data information, presentation, and, and some other elements that can be have. So the package is a whole package. So the idea is that you just don't have a format, but you have also some guidance on how to go about protection risks that can be helpful for joint analysis, and also on uh, understanding how to use the format so you can really use it flexibly. So even if we try to structure it a bit, to try to be very, very, to give you end zone guidance so you can adapt it to your needs. This is the course. So resuming the changes are to new formats. Uh, and the decision should be strategic on when to publish them uh, and very much focus on protection risk with the guidance that we try to develop together with the AORs. I wanted now to present you a bit the process, but before going into the process, maybe I, I pause a bit um, and over to you if there is any question, doubts or reflections so far. I would like us, instead of moving very quickly, really to be sure that at least the minimum I'm being able to express it properly. So over to you. Is there any question, doubt so far? Thank you, Kimberly. So there is no reaction. Sometimes up if you want me to continue, and then I can continue. Thank you, thank you. OK, so on the process, which really try to make an effort also, I mean, building on uh, uh, operations work of the last year and a half, not just to work on the on the formats and the, and the guidance, but also to look at the process to make it a bit less cumbersome and a much more effective. So uh, the first element is that the decision on the scope 
the timeline, the objectives of a protection analysis update is defined within the cluster. So we really advise to involve AUR coordinators, then now they are also briefed about all this guidance, the fact that we're focusing on risks and so on, so it should be a bit easier compared to some other example that we had in the past. And um, But it's up at a level of protection cluster coordination with the partners that you actually can identify. So we really suggest that you try uh, maybe this month or maybe this quarter to map out uh, ideas of protection analysis update you might have during the year. So try to map out when will be ideally for you to publish, if it will be a standard brief, uh, and have a bit of conversation in, uh, in that regards. And uh, what we suggest is you engage strongly the, the geographical focal point from the HPC. So because we are in, constantly in touch with them uh, on also strategic uh, aspects at global level. So in this first period between March and April, if you can map out together the, P the, the PAU that you foresee that might be published at, uh, at the, uh, in your country, then we can really plan together not just the support, but also how strategically use them better. The supervision, the leading of all the development process stay in the cluster. Uh, we on the GPC side, on the global protection cluster side, we are just there for support. So you just call us in when you need, and all your need on the, on the supervision is on your hand. But uh, one, one thing that we introduce is that compared to maybe the last year and a half that you might have had different colleagues and people that could support you, but different voices, the geographical focal point are always your entry point uh, to actually understand better the quality, the publishing criteria, and other aspects about the protection analysis update. Um, so you can reach out to them, and then uh, we are working very closely with them in order to understand if there is a support, for instance, from us, on the advocacy side, or from the colleague of the AM side, and so on. So, I mean, transferring this on a pragmatic approach, there will be ideal in the next couple of months to do a mapping, discuss well with the regional focal points, uh, not just what do you foresee, that you would like to do, but also where you will need support. Uh, in uh, as the other core step that we introduce is that in order to maintain some consistency in terms of protection analysis update uh, on the advocacy side, so the team composed by Marie and me and Alison that you might, might know, uh, we are going to look at core criteria that now I will show you in order to identify whether we, we can go about um, for a document as a PAU, so as a protection as update, or something else. At that stage, or even before or during the process, of course, we discuss very closely with, the, with you in the country the, the best dissemination strategy. So we could have a private approach that happened already with some country where we don't want to publish it on the website publicly and so on, but we want just to have a private sharing with, with key actors or the generally the donors, or we can decide that we publish part. <laughs> so uh, what is important is that before publishing, we look together at what is the best dissemination strategy. If there is none, uh, nothing particularly, the standard that we do is that we publish it in the website, and the website is already connected with the Relief Web and other platform. So that's maybe the, the other change. All the publication of the PAU go through the GPC website. So it would be ideal that once you have planned it, you share it with us, with the geographical focal point and us, and then we normally ensure that we publish it within the day. I mean, we have a team and one of our colleagues that's very efficient and we normally publish them very quickly. Uh, all these steps uh, are in the SOPs that I share, so you can also have a look and can share it with the colleagues. Uh, what you're going to see is this visual. So it's more a visual approach, so you can clarify well the very simple steps uh, and, who's, uh, and who's involved at each time. So as you can see, the first part basically uh, is a summary of what we just discussed. So at the level of the cluster, you decide the scope, the, the, the timeline and the objective you have. You maintain a conversation with the geographical focal point in the global protection cluster. And then at the level of the global protection cluster, we are in constant communication with the geographical focal point for any support. Uh, on the second part, what it provides visually is this, this, these elements that I was explaining that in the moment we're going to look at the criteria, we are going to discuss with geographical focal point whether the document goes as a professionalized update or not. And also, and then it opens a dialogue between us because we might see an interest of having it as a professionalized update because we actually attach specific advocacy action or as something else. In all cases, before republication, the whole dissemination strategy is discussed together. 
you will see this in the SOPs and also there is a detailed uh, plan with the, the with description in case you have to need to use it with the sub with the partners in your countries. To finalize on the process side, uh, um, I wanted to show you the four core criteria we use for publishing. Then there are others that are more qualitative, uh, but when it comes to pub publish it as a PAU, the first is about the process. What we learned from the last year and a half, and probably you know more because you are in operations, is that when we manage to do a very good consultative process for the protection analysis update, there is a better buy-in and there is a better use, and they are much more impactful. So one of the things that we actually ask is that this year we try to be more consultative in the process. There's the reason that we simplify the, 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 even the document. Um, of course, there is not going to be any vetting, so nobody's going to come and ask exactly who you're involved and so on, but uh, it's up to the to the cluster coordination, I mean, uh, between uh, cluster coordinator, co-coordinators and, and the SAP, to actually try to make, make sure that the core actors are involved in the process of analysis. The second element is about the, the limitation of the five risks, uh, so documents that have more than five, six, seven, ten, eight, we can just produce them as something else. But so we ensure that when a donor or when a humanitarian coordinator, they receive a protection analysis update, they always know what to expect. They will know that there will be maximum five risks, that are the priority for the period. So it makes the document much stronger uh, in that sense, or at least what we've been thinking in the, in the consultation we've been doing in the last three months. Of course, there is an, an analysis of the format, so a major there is a lot, you will see there is a lot of flexibility possible, but we are going to look about uh, at least a bit of consistency. And then one core chapter that we introduced that we would like to, that is maintained across the protection analysis update is the acceptive summary. I mean, you know from experience that oftentimes the first, uh, the first page is what is looked at the most by external actors, but also we, by doing a good executive summary, you don't need sometimes just to present all the PAU. You can just use the executive summary as the first element that you can use in briefings, uh, and then of course uh, share the protection analysis update afterwards. So you actually simplify the process and give you the possibility of having an additional products to be used. Uh, we will actually delve into the, the elements afterwards, but the goal of the executive summary is that there are the core updates for the period in terms of what happened in the context, the list of the five risks identified and two top line recommendations. They can be either built on the recommendation below that you're going to present at the final part of the protection analysis update, or they can be two big asks uh, or two core messages that can be also be advocacy messages or calls to action. Um, those are the criteria. I, I, in the experience, because we have been testing many of these with some operation, we have seen that if you maintain a dialogue, the criteria are going to come easy. So there is ne never, there's never been so far a moment in which we come and there is a lot of change. But we thought that structuring a bit better what we expect in a professionalized update might also simplify your work when you engage partners, actors, AUAs, and so on and so forth, because now there is a clear structure that you have to basically feed the analysis into. So I stop here. So the core aspects of the process are strong connection with the geographical focal point in the level of the global protection cluster. Compared to the past, we really asked to try to map out the protection analysis update now for the year, because that will really help us out in doing anticipation and actually foresee strategic use of the protection analysis update. So if we know that there is uh, the global level uh, renewal in the Security Council in July of some mandate or and we know that you have a planned PAU, then we know that for certain briefing or for certain mission that maybe sometimes uh, Sam, the Global Protection Cluster Coordinator has, we know that we can provide the documents to him and attach it to different actions that the Global Protection Cluster is doing. Um, so the process is that. I will actually pause now. I would like to hear from you if any of this makes sense, if you see any some already something that is going to be challenging, or if actually some of these already answered to some of the challenges you have. And before moving to the second part, because the second part, we're going to go and look at the details of the documents. So I would like to pause a bit. So over to you, if there is any question, any doubt. But this all is clear, um, and I wanted to express that for our experience in Venezuela, we have used the template already, 
to produce. Ah, okay. uh, we have and it was super um, smooth experience. It was clear. It helped us organize better and it went all well, actually. So we had a first hand mm -hmm. experience with a new format and it went really well. Ah, good. Okay, it's good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And did it help? Did it help him actually bring in together colleagues from AORs or other partners in actually when you when you went to prioritizing? Yeah, of course. We actually had a consultation with our um, partners, other organizations from the civil society, and also the coordinators of the areas of responsibility, specifically to consol consolidate some recommendations and identify the main protection risks across the country. Yeah. Good, thank you, thank you for that. Any other inputs? Clarifications? I don't know, I don't know if Natasha and Gri, uh, Natasha and Gri, are, probably you know them, are two of the, our regional focal points. I don't want to call you in, but if you have any comments on the process on uh, way forwards. No, I mean, the only first of all, uh, congrats on all this work. I think it's really it's really excellent. And um, I'm myself a field person. So this um, um, for those who don't know me and I would have been very happy to have this kind of, of document to work with. Um, it gives a structure and I think it helps to think. It helps mm. to be systematic in uh, in thinking and in in analyzing and uh, in the conclusion. So, yeah. No, I think uh, I think that um, any you know future um, adaptations or or ideas mm -hmm. or anything will then come, but with using it, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. it's always difficult to see it in a in a theoretical situation. Yeah. But uh, yeah. no, I think it's it's absolutely excellent with all of the guidelines and all of the um, you know additional. Um, Aid that that you developed. So yeah, kudos to you. Yeah, thank you, Nash. Yeah, there is one element that we've been trying to really reflect a lot, which is we think because also I'm an operational person all my life, uh, it's good to have something structured, but that gives flexibility to adapt it to different situations. That is really a very difficult balance uh, to find. Uh, what we have in the guidance now, it try to look at that balance, but we will learn by using it. So um, that's the reason that one of the idea of the webinars that we had, beside the one of next week that will focus on protection risk analysis, is to have one by the end of April. So we really encourage you to look at the guidance, try to use it, try to engage partner maybe on the reflection of the PAU. So then at the end of April, we can really have a good webinar of reflection and uh, and then we can we can think about uh, about how they use it. So no, thank you. Thank you for that, Natasha. If there is no other comments, uh, if you're still there, because it's uh, sometimes it's morning for some of you and sometimes it's after lunch, I can move to the next section. Is that okay? Thumbs up. Fantastic. So now bear with me because I'm going to go chapter by chapter and my idea was to present you the rationale of why we structure in a certain way. So happy to hear if you don't agree with the rationale or if you sparkle some ideas or have any reflection and if I need to clarify some doubts. So uh, we already discussed about the executive summary. So the executive summary looks as you see it, uh, maximum one page. Uh, this is really a strong advice. One page and two line doesn't work because we cannot use it properly and so on. So really to keep it in one page, because also that helps in really reflecting together on what is core to present for the period, what is the core aspects. And that's actually make our message stronger. So the first part is to provide some context updates, but very two paragraphs, very concrete, not general context update that everybody else can read in, in other documents, but really focus on what we think is fundamental to show and that can illustrate why we identify certain protection risks. Here you can see the example from the sample itself. So it can be something general as the first paragraph, 
where we are saying that in these uh, fake countries that we develop, in this scenario that we develop, there has been a combination between uh, droughts, climate shock and forced addiction. And this is having a cumulative effects in the coping capacity. And actually there were already existing protection risks, but these are, they are increasing. Another way is actually, if you don't, it's good, actually, we suggest that we saw it in certain operation and I think it's a good, uh, and we had a good feedback, is that instead of focusing on a country, in a country wide update, focus on areas. So there might be things that are known to everyone, but uh, we can provide a protection cluster and attention to certain areas. So as you can see in the example on the second uh, paragraph, since January 2022, recent conflict in this, this, this other region, matched with uh, um, flooding in this, this other region. Together, they are creating this situation. That is, if it's not addressed by a specific period, it's going to be even worse. So it's also a way to send a message, not to present just an update. Then, of course, the list of protection risks. Uh, no need to explain it much because there is going to be a full chapter. So people is actually invited to look at the chapter. Uh, and then, as we were discussing before, uh, core urgent action needed. We actually decided to use the word action, not recommendation. We have a section on recommendation. But here is to really flag what are the two, three core messages that we want to send either to the humanitarian coordinator, the humanitarian country team, or to different actors. And uh, not necessarily has to be framed as one of the recommendations, can be also, I mean, an advocacy message or something strong. Then uh, there are some elements that we suggest to make it stronger, but I will present it later. Uh, here an example, I mean, again, in the scenario we developed for the protection analysis update, in the scenario we'll see that there has been uh, the government issue a law to ban a certain organization to work. So here, uh, the, the first call to action is actually to ask for the reverse, uh, to reverse the decision and to ensure specifically passage to a certain area. So this is one example, but you can go about no more on detail. Then two other elements that this depends a lot on what you have available is to introduce the severity map. So what the work you've been doing with the HNOs. Our suggestion is to maintain the focus of the protection analysis update on the update. So we have seen sometimes protection analysis update published in November with the severity map of December of the previous year. So in 11 months, you know that many things can happen, so it doesn't support strongly the analysis. So what we suggest that either you update the map, so if you have a protection analysis update published in July, you try to re-update it and present a new map, um, or if you present the, the oldest one, try to qualify how the situation changed a bit. And below there is a table also to show variation possibly in people in need that you could also use. If you're not able from an IM perspective, so from the calculation side to calculate the severity, because we know that in many operations, sometimes you don't have the capacity, we introduce at the, at the end of the executive summary, a table that you could develop even uh, just by having <coughs> a joint analysis exercise with partners uh, again in UI, where we, to try to show whether there are specific regions or provinces, depending on uh, the administrative name that you use in your country, there has been an increase or a reduction or, or, on the severity or where it's been, it's been stable. So it's good, it's a, it's a way to keep the attention. So compared to what we presented back in December, January on our NHNO, please be aware that the situation in this area and this area, is, we have seen it, we have seen that actually is actually getting worse or it's improving, but there are still this situation. So as you can see, the goal, even from the executive summary itself, is to maintain a constant focus on the update, because then you can catch the attention and then you can use it as an entry door to present other analysis, other elements or other messages that you would like to share with both the monetary coordinator, the country team, the other cluster or, or the donors themselves. Um, I stop there on the executive summary before moving to the context. Uh, if there is any question or doubt or something you don't agree, it should be different. Thank you, Kimberly. <coughs> Sorry. So I move on. I, I'm actually, I don't want to be overwhelming you with information. Ah, please, Douglas, come in. Hi, uh, I just had a question. So it's only a recommendation or a suggestion that we use the severity map? Mm -hmm. Ah, 
<laughs> I told you what else. Um, I see that it says include if relevant, but I'm just wondering per the new format, if we're required or if we'll have that discussion with our GPC focal point um, and so on and so forth over. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the recommendation is to include it after discussing the geographical focal point. So try to take a decision, at least now that we are rolling it out, take a decision um, at each PAU. Meaning uh, that what we would like to do is to start having an updated severity map. So by the time in November and December you have to the HNO, really during the year, maybe you already updated. So the PAU can also serve having less work at, in November and December. But we know that for some operations, they might not have the same IM capacity than other. So we have not been that prescriptive to say do it. Okay, so there, there is a strong recommendation to include an updated severity map. I don't know if I answered that. Yes. Let me move on. Please stop me at any time. The context. So the context is quite loose, so it's quite flexible. Uh, the only things that we, I think that is important change is that limit it to three pages. Don't go beyond the three pages that they, they advise. We have seen many documents that have a very interesting context analysis of 10, 15 pages, but honestly, those are very, very difficult to share and to actually be impactful. Um, so considering that we, we we suggest the protectionized update to really focus on an update, you use the context to provide core trends, core elements of the latest period. OK, so for the one of you that has been using more the protection analytical framework, so I have a better analysis using the context side of the protection analytical framework that gives a lot of information, try to use that. Otherwise, this can really be based on uh, the even the expert judgment and the, the different exercises that you already have. So there is nothing to be reinvented. The only core elements that we introduce is a table at the very beginning of the context session where to include five core figures. Okay, there can be the five core figures that you strategically decide that it's important to present. So it's they're not, we are not prescriptive. We don't think that we should be prescriptive. So because sometimes you want you might might what might be important to present protection sector data, or sometimes maybe some data of other sectors. So here in the in the sample, as you can see, we included the IDP due to droughts or the IDP due to conflict. Um, so there might be an interest, it might be important to know because. The old movement situation is compounding the protection risks. That can, can be one of the examples. Then, of course, in the first protection analysis update, you are not going to have an idea of variations because it's the first. But then we suggest that by the time you start producing them, you show the variation of the key figures that you have been using uh, if you don't change them compared to the previous protection analysis update. So we are going to have a protection analysis update now in March and one in October. In the one in October, showing what is the person, the, the, the what is the been the variation compared to the one in March in terms of not in total number but in terms of percentage, but also the variation compared to the same period of the year before. So if you're presenting here in March, showing what is the variation compared to March 2022. This with we have seen that this is quite impactful and actually invites many of the our targets to actually read the content. Because one thing is to read, for instance, that there has been uh, 1,429 GBV incidents. Another one is to, to, to see that there has been a 20% variation compared to the last period, and, and there has been 50% variation compared to the last year. That's actually much more imp impactful. Then the other, even I, I am saying for the context that is no standard structure, we have seen from actually your work uh, of last year that sometimes uh, including subheadings that already tell something is really helpful. So when you structure the context, if you see that there is something that you really want to, to, to show, try to introduce some subheadings. So here again, you can see an example from the sample, uh, steady erosion of livelihood and copy capacity. So in this period, what we want to show that for the context, everybody may know the general things about the context, but from our protection perspective, the, what is impacting protection risks is the fact that uh, the population or, or in general is actually doesn't have, have much less livelihood capacity and, and, uh, and copy capacity. Or worrying impacts of poor governance and the disruption of community fabrics. Maybe everyone in the context knows that there is intercommunal tension and intercommunal fighting. 
But for us, what is important to show that one of the effects is that the community fabric is actually being destroyed, and this is having an impact of the protection risk we are presenting in the analysis. So this is just a suggestion. There is no need of using this title, but if you want, we. I mean, if, if it's one recommendation we have. Sometimes when you do the analysis, if it's something that is actually coming out strongly, just put it as a subtitle, and then you can also organize the analysis better in the context. Um, lastly, there are no standard requests to introduce specific IEM elements. And uh, we have just a couple of suggestions. Uh, of course, you can use uh, the the people in need, all the, work, all the work you've been doing with the people in need. But if it's an update, we suggest that, again, you focus on variations. You focus on uh, maybe even if you show the number of the last pin calculation you did months before, try to put something narrative that explain that might be a change or so on. Don't just present the data itself. Uh, the second recommendation is it's good to use protection monitoring, multi-sector assessment of other survey and monitoring you have that's based on questionnaire. But sometimes what we don't advise is to use uh, graphs that just show the answer to one question. So those graphs that says percentage of male, female, and children are answering this, this, and this, like we have sometimes in the protection monitoring, but which you try to combine at least multiple questions or to show some trends. So because then you all always can refer to a protection monitoring report or to some other analysis document you do where you actually show a report. But here, try not to use single data point uh, analysis, but more uh, trends or correlation. Remember that what we want to show is that probably people knows about the problem. Try to just use the data very smartly. So to show something else, something that it's actually strongly suggesting the, the priority protection risk and why those are priority on our side. Um, again, another pause on my end on the context. There is any question? Thank you, Kimberly. So let's move to protection risks. Um, the protection risk section, first of all, uh, uh, as the context. Yeah, of course, Douglas, I will share the presentation as well. Um, the, the protection risk section, as per the context, that doesn't have a prescriptive structure in terms of what to present, so you are very flexible to present it according to the data and information you have, according to what is better to present in the country. On the protection risk section, the only things that we introduce is, of course, the limitation to five protection risks, um, but also the fact that we will, we will invite you to use the 15 standard protection risk categories. So that means that the way you present it will always be organized according to those categories. That doesn't mean that you have to use the exact same terminology. We will have a session next week where we're going to explore that. Uh, and I will also provide you some inputs here. We don't ask to actually use the same wording. But you can also discuss uh, at the level of your operation how to adapt the wording. But it would be important that between you and the Global Protection Cluster, we know that what you identify in a protection analysis update pertain to one of the categories we have. Because we're also building a global system to track and also to reduce, to reduce the burden of work on your side for the global protection update and for other aspects. So we are trying to systematize all the information together. And also the other goal is it's, we really made an effort to work with the global AUR to have a unique voice. So if we start using these categories are now agreed with global AUR, so you can discuss with your colleagues of the AUR in country to actually present jointly the analysis as it is contributing to a core protection risks. These make us stronger as a sector rather than present different voices. So there's a reason that the second elements you see in the PowerPoint is make sure that you engage partner in AUR, not just for section that they are, let's call, let's call it their section. I mean, we've seen many, a lot of practice last year where the protection is update might have been divided by I don't know, child protection issues or GBV and HLP, and we were asking those colleagues just to contribute to that part. The goal is slowly to really do a, doing a joint analysis. So we might identify specific protection risk in the country, and it would be good to see the contribution of all areas that we have in protection to that protection risk specifically. 
As said, uh, um, the headings is the only element that is core, and it has to be based on the core definitions, the 15 core definitions. Uh, and we have some hints, you're going to find it in the guidance, uh, in order to maintain the language of protection risks. What does that mean? Protection risks are, you know very well, a form of violence, coercion, and deliberate deprivation. So in order to be expressed, expressed as such, they have to maintain certain minimum language. And uh, so the hints are, as you can see, avoid general formulations. So all forms of violence, we really don't suggest you to use it. First of all, because we cannot touch into none of our category or too many categories, but also it's not giving a clear prioritization of what we mean. Okay, maybe everybody knows that there is all forms of violence, but we can call the attention of some area specifically. The same goes for housing, land, and property. It's really an encompassing category. So what it is about as housing and property that is actually priority as a risk in the latest period is uh, impediments to legal identity or to access to legal identity or access to justice or it's forced eviction. So you can really use the risks to be much more concrete. The second aspect is whatever wording you're going to use, um, try to always include an, an element that qualify a man-made action. So force, denial, impediments, this is to ensure the language that they were showing a form of violence, coercion, and deliberate deprivation. Um, and some of them are much more clearly like attack or uh, cruel, uh, cruel actions or something like this are already showing something that is related to man-made uh, responsibility. The first suggestion is in many countries where there are complex crises, specific one of the comes to mind is food security. Food security or malnutrition or famine, those are strong crises that actually influence the overall humanitarian sector. In those cases, we don't suggest that as one of the protection risks use exactly, for instance, food security or malnutrition, but you qualify what is the protection side of the, of, of the problem of malnutrition. So it might be that we identify core protection risks that are a driver, or maybe core protection risks that are actually being exacerbated because of malnutrition. So you use that. So you use the protection of this language. And of course, in the narrative, you, you can link it with the situation in the country. This is also a way to help you in having a better role, a better narrative in uh, intercluster discussions. When the intercluster discussion maybe goes beyond protection or is much more focused to another area of, uh, of needs. And the last, which is simple and is related with the first, uh, uh, gen avoid general uh, general wording like uh, uh, like uh, conflict or like uh, occupation. All those elements that they might be in the context, but on the protection risk, let's try to be specific. So as you can see, we're going to have a specific session next week, but the idea is that in the protection risk section, you use the core category. We try to work on the categories for two reasons. One, to agree on unique categories with the AOR, because I think it might be helpful for your day-to-day -day work. And the other, try to have a consistent language across all clusters, because that will really give us a unique voice instead of way of presenting differently the, pro the, the, pro the problems we see at the different countries. Any question on the protection of this section before I move to response? Is all clear so far? Please, uh, Gash, I hope I didn't pronounce it. No, thank you, Francisco. Um, my question is not on the protection risk analysis, but the previous topic. Sorry, I will okay. take you back on, no, on no, the key worries. figures. Yeah. Yeah. On the, yeah, on the key figures. Uh, for our context, we are going to, we, you know, we, we, I'm, I'm from Syria, so we have like three hubs in, in Syria. We agreed that we are going to have three context analysis for each uh, three hubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, for North East Syria, where I am uh, based, we don't, we, this is the first time we are going to develop the context analysis, uh, the, mm -hmm. the um, risk analysis. So here, like the, the key figures, we don't have that comparative um, previous uh, data. So what do you advise on that? Take out the line. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we know that. So for the first one, just present the key figures. We had actually, if you look at three days ago, we published the protection analysis update in Afghanistan. And as you will see, they used the table, but we took out the, the comparative percentage because it's so normal. Sometimes it's new data. So when it's new data, 
uh, let's not include the comparison and the comparison you can include it when you have it. Any other doubt before we move on to response? I want to wait a bit because the response is where we actually try to do, but we're not saying many changes, but it's we had a clear rationale. You know, so. Okay, let me delve into that. So on the response section, um, a bit between the consultation we had with many of you and uh, a bit the lessons learned we had from this last year and a half is, we really presented very well the account of what do we do in the country, normally in the PAU. So we had the dashboards, may, all of you have good dashboards on funding, on response, on four or five Ws. You, you have all that, even products and even good dashboards. Words. So what we, we we tended to do is to use that dashboard and include them in the protection analysis update. What we've been realizing is that we could really use the protection analysis update to reinforce that other elements. So you can maintain your dashboard and your presentation of the general program in general funding and use the protection analysis update actually to showcase important things that humanitarian coordinator, humanitarian country team, or whoever is going to read, whoever is your target, has to understand to actually qualify that other elements that you can present through 4 or 5 W's funding and so on. So uh, the first element is to show the progress made. So we normally, that's another, that we also, it's that comment from some donors, we normally start from the negative. We lack this, we have a problem here and so on. So our, the, the idea that we had is that in the protection analysis of days, let's start showing what progress we made. So we managed to reach this many people, we managed to do that. And of course, then you will see, then we will present the critical gaps and so on. But let's start from something that is extremely important to show as a progress. So in all the difficulty, in all these analysis, we manage as a cluster and a cluster partner to do this. One example, as you can see here, is again from the sample. The first is about uh, the reach, the population reach, which is always a good number to give because normally we have the people in need, but it's always to give an account of how many people we have been reaching. Um, but here specifically, I'm not going to go and read, uh, but what we are saying here is that in December 2021, for the first time, we managed to have an explosive ordinance intervention in, in one of the rebel control area. Extremely important, we've been trying for years, so it's a message that we're going to send. Um, so really focus on something that is important to qualify also the analysis of risk and to reinforce your recommendation. Because imagine that here with this example, for instance, we managed for the first time to have an explosive ordinance intervention in one region controlled by the rebel. The recommendation can be, we really ask donors to support the, the starting of this type of intervention in the other two regions where there are the rebels. And maybe we can present an example on how we manage in one area, in area to actually try to respond to other areas. It's one example. But so start from the progress made. As a second element, so we, we show the progress, let's show what are the constraints. So we, of course, access for protection, because as you know, we launched a campaign in December and we're going to follow all the year the, the campaign on access for protection. So by actually having this part in the protection analysis update, we can use the protection analysis update in other action of advocacy that we are doing at global level. But besides that, what is important for us is that from your operation, you have a space where you can actually express not the typical OCHA data on access, but what are the constraints you see from a protection perspective? So again, showing an example, the numbers can be that table of the numbers. It's, it's not mandatory. You can use it as a suggestion, again, showing variation. But if you don't have the numbers, for instance, in the, in the example that you're going to find, what we're saying here is that there has been there are intercommunal conflict in this and in this and in this region. And it's extremely fundamental for us that this has been addressed or we actually are supported in order to reach and so on and so forth. So that part of the access for protection to be used uh, to show core concrete challenges that you have that can also reinforce the recommendation, but also they can be reinforced by the progress made. So we managed to do this progress in one area. We have this challenge in the other area. So we need support in to actually do more or less the same process. To conclude the response, so what what are the critical gaps? So we made this progress. These are the challenges. And what are the gaps we see? The critical gaps, you can present them again, funding gaps, uh, operational gaps, uh, access. Uh, and 
what we ask to consider is to not present a general overview, so maybe just a graph of the funding gaps, but try just to present core aspects that are important for the risks. So if the priority protection risk, I am going to extremize, is um, forced marriage, for instance, and that's one of the areas where we still didn't manage to have good programming, just focus on that gap. So let's focus on something that is extremely important. Then you can have your dashboard with the 45W with the funding that can actually back up what you put in the protection analysis updates. Again, here is an example, but here is exactly the example again in uh, where we are saying that in December, uh, in uh, two areas where that are covered, that the protection risk or presence of uh, ordinance is really high, uh, the, two, uh, the two actors that were intervening, they stop funding. So we have a gap. And uh, considering that it's a priority risk that we identified in this last period, is a very, very concerning gap. Um, and so on and so forth. So uh, try to use the critical gaps to show something that is at your heart and it's extremely important to show uh, in order to, so you can really use it flexibly. So as you can see, the response section, the goal is it should be part of your own joint analysis with partner you are SAG, not just to identify the priority protection risk, but to identify the three core aspects we want to show in terms of how the response is going. So both the progress, the challenges and the gaps. I will pause for a moment again if you have any question on this section. Or doubts. Thank you, Kimberly. So let me move to recommendations so that maybe we can have a, a bit of open the space or uh, for question, otherwise we can stop uh, earlier. The recommendation section. Here also we try to really focus on updates, make it simpler, and uh, be much more impactful when you present recommendations. So the first element is focus. The protection is update should not for, should not include all the recommendation possible that we have. So sometimes, of course, we have many recommendations from the operational part, from the planning part, from the advocacy coming from different constituency. So from all the AORs, from all the members of the SAG, from the local national, national actors, from the international actors, and the, the, the protection cluster network is so wide. So the level of the recommendation we have is really, really, really wide. What we suggest in the protection analysis update that we just introduce the core recommendations that are important for the period. As you can see, I always go back to the period. So we know that this, 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 this need to be addressed in the country, and we know that since years. But in this latest period, this is extremely fundamental. So let's try to use that as a conversation. So it might also think help, help in uh, thank you, Andrea. This might also help in uh, actually having a joint discuss strategic discussion with partners and with constituency. So as you can see, our goal was to try to to develop the PE protection update for you as an instrument to have actually joint strategic discussion with partners. The second element is to organize the recommendation by protection risks. So for two global reasons. One is showing a unique voice. So as a protection cluster, these are the protection risks we identify, and these are all the set of recommendation to have an integrated approach and a collective approach to address those risks. So we are not presenting the recommendation. Of course, we might have recommendation of coming from different areas of responsibility or from different partners. But here, instead of showing the multitude of partners we have, we show that we all agree in our strategy to address protection risks. And that sometimes donor has been telling us that they would like to see that approach, a much more integrated approach. So in the PM protection analysis format, you, the, the idea of organizing the recommendation is all about the five protection risks. Of course, you might have recommendations that actually touch on multiple risks. So either it's important to present it at least once, or you can even repeat it if it's important. Or as you can see, there is a section at the beginning where there is a part that you can introduce something, and then you can say if there is a general recommendation that touch on, on all risks. In providing the recommendation link to risk, try to think whether if something happens or doesn't happen, will the protection risk get worse? Or think about the response we are providing. Is the response that we are providing actually having an impact or it has to be adjusted 
to not exacerbate existing risk or to actually mitigate specific risk. Or there has been a, we know the response we have, but there has been a strange or a new or a very concerning trend in the latest period. So there are specific recommendations that might be new or they might be used to actually address just the specific situation. A sudden eviction, for instance, that normally doesn't happen, but uh, in that period happens. Um, the latest part is about targets. Any recommendation without targets is not very helpful in actually showing how strong are our recommendation. And, but also when many of you ask, how can we be better in engaging humanitarian coordinator, humanitarian coordinator team, donors and so on, by trying to reflect on which are the specific target really helps uh, maybe even developing a roadmap at cluster level to actually have a follow up on those recommendations. On our side at the level of the global protection cluster, if you manage to organize in targets, we can also know when we can use some of your recommendation for maybe the same actor that we're addressing at the global level. Maybe you have some recommendation for a European Union member states, and we're going to have a meeting with a European Union member states for some other reason. So if we know that your target is specifically that, we can use it much more efficiently. For that reason, we, you will see in the guidance that we organize the targets in four groups, as you can see here. So government, authorities, the fact of authorities, parties of the conflict, donors and member states, resident coordinator, humanitarian coordinator, humanitarian county team, humanitarian community partners, and other clusters, and then internal protection sector, actor partners, and AUR. And, and you can adapt the wording, of course. Uh, so instead of government, you would like just to, to mention a specific ministry or a specific uh, governorate. Of course, it's it's a government as a body, a global body, so please, you can adapt them. The only things we suggest that you maintain the four categories separated. So uh, you don't put, for instance, donors and protection partners. Uh, if it's that, try to divide them. This also because, as I was telling you, at the global level, we are trying to develop a, a system to organize the information, to present it better, also for advocacy. And we will have probably the website, a database that show all your work in the protection analysis update. So this is going to help us out in having more consistency. So this is the way it's going to be shaped in the protection analysis update. But if we look uh, from another angle, these are the six recommendations that we have, and you will find it in the guidance to actually develop the recommendations. Always link them to protection risk and try always to have targets. Uh, the most precise they are, the better it's for you to actually ensure that the partner and all the, the, all the constituency have a monitoring of what's happening on those recommendations. Try to always write an action. So not a general recommendation that says we should address the generalized gender bias, gender based violence in the country, but let's propose something uh, by doing this, this and this, or this should be done by, as a priority now and so on. But try always to suggest an action. Try always to attach a specific timeline, meaning even if it's not specific in terms of a date, uh, in, in the next quarter, in the next six months, in the next year, in the next week. Uh, uh, so we are, we can be stronger. If this recommendation is not enacted or this is not taking upon in the next two months, this situation that we qualified is going to get worse and this might happen. So let's try to also link the recommendation more to the analysis. And then sometimes you might have recommendations that are general, that are known, but you can make them more specific by focusing in one region or one province or any admin unit you think it's best. So we should address the, the, the evictions that are happening specifically in this, this and this region. Because specifically in those regions, you know that there is a, uh, probably a bigger threat of those happening, or maybe there is not a bigger threat, but if those evictions happen, the situation might get much worse because the population doesn't have other capacity, so they can trigger other situations. And then the latest is try to always balance recommendation for the external, the, all actors outside the protection sector with recommendation inside the protection sector. Because that can show really how strategic we are in our analysis. We are not just providing recommendation to tell others what to do, but we want really to enforce a collective strategy. So from our side, we have to adjust this and this, but we need the donors or the military coordinator or this other target to do this. If these two actions doesn't happen together, and we are not often able to achieve this impact. So this you find it in the guidance, but it's a bit of a suggestion now to go about the recommendation. Here are an example. 
that you also will find in the in the guidance. Advocate with the Ministry of Education. So the risk is denial of access to service. It's linked to the risk. Advocate with the Ministry of Education, so the target, to allow children who are missing some valid identity and civic documents to enroll in schools and participate in public exams. So we are telling exactly the action. So not just to allow children to have safe access to school. So we're telling, telling much more concretely, there is an element related to the documentation and the other one is the participation in the exam before September 2022. This maybe in the analysis we would have written that if by September 2022 um, this doesn't happen, then we're going to have data that is going to show that there might be a worsening of the situation. So that also can help us out in reflecting better on the recommendations. Uh, having said that, uh, the step by step on the on the format is finished on my end. So as you can see on all chapters, the idea is they all link together. Uh, these are the core messages. They all link together. If they are really focused on update, so this should help you out in uh, in actually have a less cumbersome process. And maybe just having more regular joint analysis with partner AUR and SAG, that that can be easily be reflected in a document. The limitation of pages also that can help you out in uh, guiding the joint collective efforts. So not anymore try to put everything in a document, but try to be rational on that side. And, and also to, uh, there is an element of flexibility that you can really adapt it to what you see is best. Um, I can post here. Uh, on my side, I just have another couple of slides on what do we do at the level of the cluster, but I can even park them. And uh, I would like to hear from some reaction if you have some. Do you see that it's rational? Again, same question. There is any challenge that you think you might have or you had? Please, uh, the floor is uh, open for any question or doubts. Hi, Francesco. Thank you so much. Um, on our end, all is clear. Um, I guess the only challenge uh, we experienced while developing uh, the protection analysis update this time was realizing that uh, we were identifying almost the same protection risks and kind of <laughs> like the same recommendations prevailed like for the same protection risks again. So that made me a bit like maybe not frustrated, but worried about the fact that sometimes maybe I don't know if you guys are expecting new ideas, new recommendations, but at the same time, it's very difficult already to follow up with, let's say, um, the recommendations you make at the beginning of the year. You reach the end of the year and feel like, well, I guess the same one applies. So I don't know what are your thoughts on that. Well, thank you, Kimberly. My, my first reaction is that there is no there is no science about it, um, meaning that we don't we don't have specific expectation, you know, that you have to be creative. The things are always the same. Um, what we suggest is, uh, I mean, some of the things that are suggested there is you might have the same recommendation, but you have a worsening in one area as compared to another area. So it's the same recommendation, and then you can put the accent on a specific area of the country or some other country, or in the new protection analysis update, you might have additional information, so you can actually tweak the recommendation and actually reinforce. So uh, sometimes some recommendation is going to be longer. Then one of the interesting things that we can look together along the year is try to maybe use this, if we get better recommendation, to have a sort of roadmap to follow up with partners. So no expectation there. I think that we have to also learn by by as we go. Um, but um, Let's also maybe I will maybe I will maintain part of this a part of the last webinar specifically on those areas because on the advocacy side we're also thinking about that. Sorry that I don't have a specific answer. No, it's okay. Thanks a lot. I think I was just sharing a maybe a worry, and I I guess it's completely fine. Sometimes it's just a matter of adapting or kind of like restating that the situation kind of stayed the same. I think it's. As we said, it, it's an update. Sometimes yeah, nothing yeah. much changed. Thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. One other advice, and then Natasha, I'll go to you. Eh? Might be 
But it's again, it's strategic. It's not a strong advice. It really depends on the context. Maybe on the second protection analysis update, you don't want to repeat the same recommendation of the first, and you just include three new recommendations. So then you just write the message, and then in the in the description, all the recommendation that we actually has been done in the past are still valid. But for specifically for this period, there is this focus. So that's another way to go about it. But um, yeah, and we also have to learn about this. Natasha. Uh, yes, I I fully understand the question, um, Kimberly, and and for other contexts where this is the case, and I think uh, we, if we look at um, the two POWs per per year and a short one, so let's say it's an average of four months that go by and. Um, mm. Sometimes even the NGO uh, landscape can have changed, or civil society mm. um, landscape can have changed. And um, another thing I would say is is also not to just take um, or, or or target the the recommendations, uh, the advocacy, etc. To um, let's say the, the 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 usual suspects, be it donors, be it um, elements of uh, of the government, uh, the perpetrators, and so on, but also um, to to partners. Um, I'm thinking here specifically ICRC. ICRC has an escalation mechanism, so um, they make interventions with the respective uh, ministry, be it the Ministry of uh, of Interior, of Defense, um, of Justice, and so on. If the recommendations are not heeded, they will they will escalate. They will, you know, it will be a stronger intervention, um, et cetera, or they will just go up the um, um, their own hierarchy scale, respectively the country scale. Um, but yeah, but also local local NGOs are to see how could actually, um, uh, how could the population, has anything changed for the population? Is there anything that they themselves could do? Um, so yes, that would be, my my input, but I understand that it's it's it can be very very frustrated, um, mm -hmm. uh, frustrating. Um, but we need to we need to keep on going. That's the only that's the only possibility we have in our sector. Over. Yeah, hello, Natasha, you're totally right. Thank you for that. Yeah, <clears throat> this helped me in telling you one of the reasons why we try to work a lot on the definition of protection risks. And also to tell you that we are now coordinating with OECHR to link uh, the human right engagement body mechanism for each protection risks. So, and it's something that if we now, today we're focusing on how to be consistent in the protection analysis update, but one of the goals in the future, even in the medium to long term, is that we want to support in having clear steps that we do when we have those recommendations. So maybe now. Now you don't have the capacity to extend those recommendations beyond, beyond the internal mechanisms. So we want to be stronger in actually say what Natasha is, is saying. Sharing specific recommendations that are very well defined against risks, because the fact that they are defined against risks, it helps us out in linking with IHL, with OCHR, so actually to engage other mechanisms that maybe sometimes are not within the humanitarian programming mechanisms. Um, and do, they have responsibility. So actually to trigger specifically attached responsibility they have on a specific situation. That's also one of the goals. No, so thank you, Natal, Natasha, for that. Mm -hmm. Any other reflection on this or anything else that we discussed during the webinar? So let me dedicate Please come in, eh? but let me get the two slides. Eh? I wanted to just to show you, probably you already know, uh, but I wanted to show you a bit what do we do with the protection analysis update, also to, to understand why <coughs> there has been these changes. Well, you, most of you know that we produce the global protection updates at quarterly level, and we're still uh, doing that. And uh, we have been changing, and we are still changing the global protection update in two, with two goals. One is, simplify your support for the global protection updates. So use as much as we can the protection analysis updates. So you can just focus on that and then we can build our update on the protection analysis update. Probably to be able to do that fully, we need the whole, the whole year because we need a bit of regularity. But what we already introduced is that we now provide an overview of all protection analysis update on one side, but also we start using the, your information in the protection analysis update for the global tracking of protection risks. 
And now we are in a phase in which we are developing criteria and so on and so forth to show them better. So we start showing better the severity by country. We provide key country highlights. We do specific briefing to donors, and uh, and we are using we are trying to use much more the protection and disability information across the whole global protection cluster. So in the last four months, we develop an entire database. We were looking to having it online, so also it's accessible. So the idea is that in the medium to long term. You, the colleagues can go online, uh, click on a risk, and there's going to be an overview of all your countries, all your rights, and all your recommendations. Okay, so we can really expand the level. So people doesn't have just to read the document, but we're going to have a section that actually show all the cumulative uh, and the specific details from all protection analysis updates. And the more we are consistent with some of the elements of the guidance, the stronger we are going to go. We are going to be with with it. And then these are the, the, the usual steps that we do. So in the moment that we have it, as we said before, we publish in the website and it goes directly to Relief Web. And we have a direct mailing to donors and partners. If there is specific dissemination strategy, or specific target you want us to reach out to, you can just speak with the geographical focal point. They will come discuss with us on the advocacy side and then we can do targeted exercise. These are some of the examples that actually we do starting from protection analysis update. So we've been doing briefings. We even wrote some private letters to member states. So this one from Norway, another one to the to the Swiss government, building on the protection analysis update. Uh, of course, we have social media, we have the mailing, uh, and then we sometimes we develop statements and positioning. These are aspects that we've been doing, of course, in coordination with, with you in the operation. But this was fully work of the global protection cluster, thanks to the protection analysis update. So this is to show you that if we manage to be consistent, then we can also escalate the support and we can be triggered for additional support on advocacy and dissemination based on the information you're going to put in the protection analysis update. And uh, I stop there. On my end, uh, I really hope uh, I'm not speaking too quickly because normally I have that uh, habit. And um, I don't know if there is any last question or doubts. Otherwise, uh, uh, just reminding that we're going to have an, a webinar next week. I'm going to send the invitation today, and we're going to focus specifically on protection risks. We're going to go through the definition, how to actually use them in the PAU, how to do protection risk analysis. So this is going to be next Wednesday, and then we're going to have a last session uh, around third, fourth week of April to do a refresher and actually listen from you. OK, how did you see it? How challenges that you found uh, and some other elements we can take into consideration. Uh, Elizabeth, please. Forgive me, I was actually going to do a thumbs up and I did a raise instead, so it was excellent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, and uh, any questions, doubts, I'm going to put my email in the chat, so please don't be afraid to reach out. But as we discuss, uh, our colleagues, the regional focal point are at your disposal for any question and uh, any follow up, and we are on their backup and support. So as of now, we, we are on the time. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope it was really useful. We wanted just to provide an overall overview. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great thank you very much. Have a great rest of the week, evening and day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.